Let's now go over what happens when you connect an inductor to an AC generator. And we have our AC generator here on the left. We'll draw the voltage upward. It's arbitrary because we remember that it oscillates up and down anyway. And the corresponding current to the right, even though it flows back and forth. And assuming that the current increases with time, the inductor is going to generate an induced EMF to oppose the increase in current, VL of T. And by the loop law, V of T minus VL of T is going to be equal to zero, which leads to, of course, VL of T is equal to V of T. Not very surprising because you've connected the inductor across your AC generator. And V of T could be anything, but remember that we said that in this chapter we would be consistent and always choose V max sine of omega T. So VL is a function of time and it's equal to V max sine of omega T. And if you graph it like we did here, you get the following graph. Now let's compare that to the current going through the circuit. Now recall that VL is LDI dt, and therefore LDI dt is equal to V max sine of omega t. And that means that we can get the expression for the current, we just have to work for it a bit. So DI dt is going to be V max divided by L. sine of omega t, and if we integrate that, i of t is going to be equal to v max divided by l, and sine of omega t is going to integrate into 1 over omega, and actually minus cosine omega t is the antiderivative, so we get minus V max over omega L cosine of omega t, which you could leave in that form if you want, or write I of t is equal to minus I max cosine of omega t, where the amplitude I max is equal to V max divided by omega L. And so that's your current through the circuit. And so it's proportional to minus cosine omega t, which means that if you graph it, you're going to get something like this. So let's take this thing, maybe scale it down a bit. Let's create a few of these. and see what we get. Well, minus cosine of omega t is going to be equal to minus 1 when t is equal to 0. So our graph is going to look like this, t equals 0. And then as time goes by, we're going to get the following So we're going to get the following. We're going to get a graph that kind of looks like sine of omega t. It has the same angular frequency, but is shifted. And whatever this graph is doing, it seems like it does it right after the voltage does it. And we'll say that the voltage leads the current. Now that actually makes sense. The induced EMF across the inductor is instantaneous and then drives the induced current. There's a bit of a lag between the establishment of the induced EMF across the inductor and the induced current. So the voltage leads the current in this case. It's exactly the opposite of the capacitor. So we have that the voltage is going to lead the current in our phase difference phi, which is phi sub i 
minus v sub v is going to be minus the quarter of the period pi over 2 radians. And the minus comes from the fact that the voltage leads the current. And so if you rewrite this, if you write v sub i, well, then you get that it's v sub v minus pi over 2. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the capacitor. In other words, we're going to write everything in terms of sine of omega t. So VL of t is V max sine of omega t. That tells us that V sub V is omega t. Because remember that whatever is in the sine or the cosine is called the phase. So the phase associated with the voltage is omega t. And if we do the same thing for the current, well, the current, I of t, is going to be I max sine of whatever the phase is for the current, phi sub i. But we know what phi sub i is. It's phi sub v minus pi over 2. And so it's omega t minus pi over 2. And again, the reason for doing this is to compare like with like. Now we can compare the sign here on the left with the sign here on the right and come to the conclusion that the only difference is minus pi over 2. And the minus pi over 2 tells you that the voltage leads the current. So this is I of t is I max sine of omega t minus pi over 2. And mathematically, that is exactly the same thing as this, because there's a trig identity that tells you that sine of omega t minus pi over 2 is minus cosine of omega t. But again, we're trying to compare like with like and make obvious the phase difference between the voltage and the current. And so then, to wrap this up, Let's introduce the inductive reactants, and let's write that I max is equal to V max divided by omega L. And again, we're going to try to put it in a form that is equivalent to Ohm's law. So V max is omega L multiplied by I max, and then the coefficient of proportionality here is going to be typically denoted by x sub l. So this is going to be v max is equal to x sub l times i max. And x sub l has a name. It's called the inductive reactance. And of course, it's an ohm, as it should be. And again, it's your coefficient of proportionality between Vmax and Imax. However, again, it's a function of omega. So if omega changes, the value of the constant changes. This is telling you how the inductor responds to a change in angular frequency, which is effectively a change in frequency. Now again, let's take a simple example. Let's assume that omega is very small. In other words, that your frequency is very low. And so the change that you have is very slow over time. Well, inductors oppose change. And so if the change is very slow, there's not much to oppose at any given moment. And therefore, the induced EMF across your inductor shouldn't be zero, but should be pretty small. Well, that's the case, because if omega is very small, close to zero, then Vmax is also very small, close to zero. And so what you're telling the inductor here is how it responds to a change in omega. You can make omega large, small, it could actually even change as time goes by. The point is that the relationship between Vmax and Imax changes accordingly because x sub L is equal to omega L. Thanks for watching this video. 
At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.